Yes, my dear friend, welcome back to the channel. Very good afternoon to you wherever you are on the globe. I'm excited to be back with this special edition on Pochettino, Mauricio Pochettino. The news going around since yesterday or even before yesterday, it's not really something that we should be excited about. Some of us that want consistencies in our team performance. We want the club Chelsea to move forward. We don't want a club that is stagnant. We want to be moving forward. We want to see our team moving forward. I personally, if not that we're able to get to the European football level or to qualifying for Europe, Europe this season, I will have no problem if Port is being sacked. Yes, I will have no problem if Port is to be sacked. But now that we are in Europe, dear friend, Chelsea getting rid of Pochettino now will be as stupid as it gets. We are in Europe. And therefore, we getting rid of Pochettino right now will be as stupid as it gets. What is the point of building a squad that was incredibly randomly assembled, to put it lightly, to then get him to come in and fix it and turn it into something manageable and then sack him when he is in the process of doing just that? What sense does it make? What sense does it make? Chelsea are not yet in a position where they will challenge immediately. With these young players, we are not yet in a position where we can challenge for trophies. Especially this first season. Going to next season, yes. Because the team is beginning to gel together. They still need to go through the stage of sorting the balance and direction of the squad. And not many are better at doing that than Pochettino. With the young squad we have, not many coaches are better than doing it than Pochettino. Would you sack him now? Would you sack him now he's starting to show the fruit of his labor? Now that he's starting to show the fruit of his labor, is it the time to sack him? Dear friend, Here's my stand. Here is my stance right now. I only care about the club Chelsea, not any other person. Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that the priority of the club and the manager is to continue with each other as of now. And only if they can't agree to each other's demands is when the club will look towards younger managers to replace him. And this is where I have the biggest problem going into this summer. They will, look, they will not go into a younger manager. Younger manager. Yo, this is, and I'll come back to that. Listen. The first part of the statement seems reasonable to me. If only they are not able to agree on terms. Now, this has been the situation since the start. And it continues to be so. What is the situation? Of course, Mauricio Pochettino wants to be part of the decision making. Those that buy the players. He wants to be part of that process of buying players and selling the players. He doesn't want players to be imposed on him. He made a demand recently that the squad now needs some experienced players, you know, to blend together. But the current structure is such that Port has no hand in recruitment. He can, he has a say, but the final decision boils down to Paul Winstanley and Co. And so, if his demand and demands are not being met or they're not going to be met, that is where there'll be problem. Either he will walk out or he might be sacked. The only way Poch isn't the manager next season is if he insists on having a bigger say in the transfer dealings and the club insists otherwise. That is the only way. The, play, the players love him and I don't see the board making rash decisions unless 
they are absolutely sure about it. I don't see the board making decisions to sack Pochettino unless they are absolutely sure about the situation on ground, knowing fully well that the club needs stability, dear friend. Well, moving forward, dear friend, you can see it clearly on the league table there. Total number of injuries this season. Chelsea top that league. For you to understand that part of Pochettino's inconsistency or the, the, the squad not performing to the best throughout the season is largely due to injury situations. Largely due to injury situations. Dear friend, that is the league, the table they write for you. The highest injury situation and the total, you know, number of players that got injured. That is what you saw there. Injuries to key players such as Nkuku, James, Fofana, Chiwa, Chaloba, and Chukwemeka, along with overall inexperience and average age of the squad, affected Pochettino's performance. If these owners are to put this into consideration, there is no reason why they will have to sack Pochettino unless they are absolutely sure on what to do. Dear friend, moving forward, here is why I think Konogalaga should absolutely stay at Chelsea next season and beyond. Here is why. One, availability is the best ability. Konogalaga, his availability is the best ability. Kono is literally your one guy who will give 110% on a pitch one, two, three times a week at a high enough level. You will say, but we have, or we got Lavia coming up. Yes, we got Lavia coming up. You will say he's better than Konogalaga. Well, that is your opinion. First of all, remember, you haven't seen him play in a Chelsea shirt enough. You haven't seen Lavia play in a Chelsea shirt enough. The guy has played like 32 minutes only, entire season. 32 minutes of pro football in more than a year. Dear friend, you can't trust someone with that kind of recent injury record to just come in at high level and sustain their form for the whole season. No. I hope not. But I still remember Marco Van Jenkel very well. Without Conor this season, we would only have Moise Casado in the middle or the midfield for a lot of games. And you can imagine, you can imagine how that would have ended. Dear friend, you can imagine how that would have ended. Two, tactically fantastic. Conor Gallagher, tactically fantastic. I've seen tweets about Conor not being technical, technical enough. I've seen a lot of tweets or on, on, on the, how do you call it, on X, that Conor Gallagher is not tactical enough. Now, two things there. 80% of those guys couldn't tell me or on tweet there, technical player from a non-technical one. They cannot tell me. They, they couldn't explain who is a technical player. Who, technical player from non-technical player. They cannot explain if you ask them. B or two. Connor is that one guy who can cover your entire midfield position-wise in whatever formations or you are playing. That enables Kukurela to play the inverted role by taking care of the left wing. Yeah. He also helps Kasaido turn into a beast. I wonder how a tactical or tactically poor guy could achieve that and still get slandered by our fan base. Well, it is very weird, you know. Play him anywhere on the pitch and he's giving you at least six, ten performance. 
play Konogalaga anywhere on a pitch and it's giving you six out of ten performance. That's not bad, is it? Three. Financially, <laughs> does it make sense financially? Does it? To sell him. Gallagher currently earns 50000 per week at Chelsea. And as reported, he's demanding £150,000 to sign the new contract. Now, first of all, 50K is well underpaid, you know that, for a Chelsea captain. 50K is well underpaid for a Chelsea captain. Secondly, I'm pretty sure both parties can negotiate and come to a middle ground in terms of wages. Yes, I'm assuming here. I'm assuming here. <clears throat> Connor has never really shown a desire to leave Chelsea. I'm pretty sure he wants to stay. It's probably up to the club to find a solution. That is, if they haven't made their mind up on the pure profit thing. Pure profit. Well, I'm not really going to go into statistics on this one because most of them, from number of chances created to most distance covered, sprint, etc., corner, they are all on Conor Gallagher's side. He is very high on all those things. I'm also not going to go into Cobhampton. That is a Cobham product. Because even if he wasn't a Cobham boy, I would still want him to stay just purely because of what he provides on the pitch. Oh, and the manager trusts him more than any... <laughs> the manager... Trust him more than any other player in the squad, minus Kopama. Yes. Poch trusts him on, on the, more than any other player on the field, apart from Kopama. But that should also be obvious by now to most of you. I've said it before. Much of our future success will depend upon how much of this squad we can keep together in the next one to five years. Stability and keeping the core group together wins you title. Stability and keeping the core group together wins you titles, dear friend. We don't need a major reshuffle anymore. Just buy two to four proven players and get rid of the dead wood. That is it. Don't try to fix what you, what it's, what, what's not broken. Don't try to fix what's not broken. Don't. We don't need major reshuffle, I repeat. Just buy two to four proven players and get rid of the dead wood. That is it. Don't try to fix what's not broken. That's just my take on Konogalaga this afternoon. We'll do on other players soon. I'll be tackling other players soon. Well, please note, this is my personal opinion, not a fact. Make up your mind instead of coming at me. <laughs> Make up your mind instead of coming after me. With, don't push your agenda on me, please. And just understand that I am just like you, who understands football, that is trying to analyze what I have seen on the pitch of play throughout the season. Dear friend, as a Chelsea fan, I shall be back with more exclusives. If you are new here, Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and let me hear from you in the comment section on Konogalaga and Pochettino. I'll see you in the next one when you see me, dear friend. Shalom and peace.